Okay, so in this next video on functional analysis, we're going to do the converse of what we did in the uh, previous video. Uh, so we're going to prove that the rest of the LP spaces, where LP is not equal to infinity, um, are they, those metric spaces are separable. So LP spaces now are separable. And uh, so far in this play, in this um, playlist, we've only been considering LP spaces uh, where P is a natural number, i.e., it's one, two, three, four, etc. We haven't been considering things like P is a half or any old real number. Uh, so we'll continue doing that for now. So LP are separable where P is a uh, natural number. Okay. So uh, let's just remind ourselves of what the LP spaces are. So the LP spaces are metric spaces, and the underlying set. Uh, of the metric space is the set of all sequences, let's say sequences x, uh, which consists of x1, x2, uh, x3, etc., all the way on to infinity, uh, where uh, the terms can either be real or complex numbers, depending on whether you want the real LP space or the complex LP space. And again, we'll keep our arguments general so that it works for both of them. And uh, then uh, the sequence has to have the property that the sum over i is equal to 1 uh, to infinity, the infinite sum, infinite series rather, uh, of the modulus of xi to the power of p needs to be finite, so it needs to be less than plus infinity. Okay, so that is the, um, that is the um, LP, uh, the set on which the LP space is going to sit, uh, and uh, this modulus sign, by the way, I didn't stress this, I don't think, in the original videos on LP spaces, this modulus sign is essential even if it's a real number, so because, for instance, if P is a, uh, for instance, that P equal 1, uh, what we want, um, well, okay, so if P, for instance, if P is 1, we do need the absolute value sign there, because otherwise we'd be summing up all the terms of the sequences, but the terms of the sequences could be negative, so we could end up with a negative value of this. So you do need uh, that modulus sign, because of course we know that the uh, distance function is going to be based on this. You do need that modulus sign there, even if um, even if we're only dealing with uh, real numbers. I didn't stress that properly at the time, because uh, in the cases where p is even, 2, 4, 6, etc., uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because um, the squaring or the Quoting or whatever, a raising to the power of an even number will turn it into a um, into a positive or non-negative number. Um, whereas, but the problem is, if p is equal to an odd number, then that won't happen. So you do need the modulus, the absolute value sign there, whether it's a real or a complex LP space. And then we defined uh, the distance, which is often abbreviated uh, written dp, uh, or between x and y, where x and y are both sequences. So I'll just write that: x is a sequence, x1, x2, etc., and y is also a sequence, so y1. Uh, y2, those are the terms of the sequence going on, uh, and the distance between them is going to be given by the sum from i is equal to 1 uh, to infinity of the modulus of xi uh, minus yi uh, to the power of p, and then you take all that entire sum, you do that infinite series, so um, um, and let me just write out what it is, it's x1 minus y1 to the power of p, you then add on x2 minus y2 to the power of p, you continue on forever, you take the limit of that process and you get some number. Take that number and do it to the power of 1 over p. That's how we defined the distance. And uh, to prove that this that this actually even exists, that this is some finite value, we used the Minkowski inequality uh, to say that, you know, this is less than or equal to... The Minkowski inequality can be used to show that this is less than or equal... Well, the Minkowski inequality exactly says that this is less than or equal to... Uh, the uh, infinite series i is equal to 1 to infinity, the modulus of xi to the p to the power of 1 over p, plus uh, the infinite series i is equal to 1 to infinity of the modulus, and really we should put in minus yi there, because it's plus, the Minkowski inequality considers this a plus minus yi, so we put minus yi in there to the power of p, uh, all to the power of 1 over p, but of course the modulus of just removes that minus instantly. Uh, so, um, providing xi and yi, as pro sorry, providing x and y are elements of LP, uh, this is going to be a finite real number, and it's going to be, um, so it is going to be well-defined uh, metric on this uh, set. 
Okay, so what we now want to do, and we've seen in previous videos why it satisfies, you know, properties such as the triangle inequality and the other axioms of metric spaces. Okay, so what we now want to prove is that this metric space is separable. And the way we're going to do that is by uh, considering a set. So I'm going to show you the set, which is going to be our S. I um, remember to show that a metric space is separable, what you need to do is find a set a subset S, uh, which is um, which is dense with it, which is countable and dense within the whole metric space X D. Now the whole metric space is clearly it's clearly um, uncountable. Uh, how would I show that that metric space is uncountable? Those LP, those um, infinite sequences. Um, mm, how would you show that that's uncountable? Well, you can pro you can get infinite series that are going to converge on every every real number, um, every real number between uh, well, an infinite series for which um, hmm, for which this sum is going to converge on any real number between zero and one. Uh, so in that way, you could put them in bijection with a real number, basically. Uh, in fact, sorry, yeah, you could get infinite series that converge on any real number, couldn't you? You could get this sum to converge to any real number you like by altering the terms of the sequence and then what you could use that as, as a mapping so you could certainly map them onto the real numbers um, and it wouldn't necessarily even be injected uh, well sorry would it be uh, injective maybe isn't the right word it wouldn't be one to one i you could it, well it could be one to one but it might not be one to one i you might even have multiple sequences going onto the same real number uh, so it would certainly mean that this was uncountable Okay, uh, so uh, that implies that this set has to be a proper subset because it cannot be the whole subset. So we can't get away with this simple trick of saying, oh, if you've got a countable metric space, um, then it's instantly separable. This metric space isn't separable, so it's not trivial. That, uh, sorry, isn't uh, countable, so it's not trivially separable, but it is in fact separable. Uh, and I'm going to show you this set S. So let's say, let's define this set S to be the countable union, the union from n is equal to 1 to infinity of how am I going to write this out of sets and I might as well label them uh, let's say um, t subscript n and now I'll define to you what these sets t subscript n is. So the set t subscript n is the set of all sequences of um, of uh, rational numbers, so all sequences of rational numbers, so q1 Q2, where you go up to the nth term, Qn, and then after that nth term, all of them are zeros after that. All of the terms of the sequences are zeros. So it's a subset of uh, L infinity, uh, where all of these initial terms are rational. So Q1, Q2, all the way up to Qn are all elements of the rational numbers. Right. Uh, so, uh, if we took, for instance, to give a concrete example, T5 would be the set of all sequences, um, so it would be the set of all sequences where you have rational numbers for the first five uh, entries, Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, Q5, and then after that you just have zeros. Not, no buts, you just have zeros. Zero, 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 zero. And other than that, you can have any rational numbers you like here, so uh, Q1, uh, to Q5, to Q5, are all elements of the rationals. So that's T5, and basically I want you to union up every single one of these sequences, um, or every single one of these sets of sequences. Okay, so we'll call it there for this video, and uh, in the next video what we will do is we'll show that each of these, each of these TNs is a countable set, so we have a countable union of countable sets. So that implies that S is countable. And I also want to address the issue of um, there is a big tendency to think that this is going to converge on the set of all rational on the set of all sequences of rational num infinite sequences of rational numbers, which is wrong. And I want to show you why that's wrong. And then finally, we will show that this set S uh, is in fact. Uh, well, firstly, we've shown that it's countable, but in fact, we need, we're going to show it's also dense within our metric space LP.